Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. Now the all-important day for Sarah Bloom is approaching, the day of her marriage with Sydney. Mama and the two girls are out shopping for articles of Sarah's trousseau. And here they are in the department store district. Ma, I don't know what you want to come along for. I can take care of it myself. And as long as I'm going with her, it seems to me too ought to be enough. I'm going to watch the use of high gearing. Don't you trust me? Of course I trust you. Don't you think I'm old enough to pick out my own trousseau? Oh, I guess we might just as well make up our minds at Ma's going. <laughs> that's the first smart thing that's been said all morning. You're my daughter and you're going to be married. And you're going to get a trousseau and I'm going along even if they have to carry me on a stretcher. Stretcher, Ma. It's all right, stretcher. I don't see what you're making such a fuss about. Getting married is not so darn important. That's where you're wrong. Only three things happen to a girl. She gets born, she gets married, and she dies. And pretty soon you'll only have one left. Who told you that? Does somebody have to tell me everything? Can't I make up something myself? What am I, a dumb and deafy? The only reason I don't like to have you come, Mama, is that you're so old-fashioned. Yeah. Up to now, I helped you pick out every dress you ever wore. Now you're engaged and suddenly you become smart. You don't need me. I picked out the dress you catched Sydney in, didn't I? That was a beautiful dress. <laughs> the man wanted twenty-nine fifty, and I made him give it to us for $23. And if you hadn't said how much you liked it the minute he showed it to us, I could have got it for maybe 20 bucks. Now, if you go along this morning, please don't start that. Oh, you expect me to pay whatever the man asks? Oh, it's so cheap to start arguing about the price. If I can save two or three dollars on each garment, I don't mind being double cheap. What do you suppose the man thinks after you leave? What do I care what he thinks? It's his head. Let him think whatever he pleases with it. But don't you think that on an occasion like this, it's a bad time to try to save money? Darling. It's never a bad time to try and save money. I know. But still, after you leave, the man or girl that waits on you, they, they think that you can't afford anything good. You mean they think I'm a poker? Piker, Ma, I wish you'd be careful not to mispronounce words. What's the difference how I pronounce them? Everybody knows what I mean. That's the main thing with any language. Besides, you take a rose, I don't care how you pronounce it, it's still not an onion. You're trying to get us off the subject. Let's for once go out shopping and try to pretend we're rich. Ah, uh, you mean you want the man to think you've plenty of money, huh? That's the idea. Then I got to bargain with them still hotter. Well, how do you figure that? Don't you understand that a rich man has got money, so he don't care what anybody thinks? Only a poor man has to play games so that people will think he's rich. All right. Ma, why didn't you change your dress? What's the matter with this dress? Nothing, but why didn't you put on your good one? When you go shopping, it's like going to the doctor. You wear your oldest dress. All right, I give up. Come on. One thing I ask you before we start. Don't go crazy about anything until I found out the price from the men. Why? The minute you like it, it becomes higher price. Come on. Understand, Sally. I'm not looking for bargains. I'm not trying to get you anything cheap. All I want to do is to get as much for Papa's money as it'll possibly bring. Well, where will we go first? Yeah, where would you like to go first? We could start at Dunlap's. They have nice dresses. Do you want to get the dresses first? Oh, sure. We'll get the dresses first and then match them up. Mm -hmm. Well, once you got a good idea. But why do we start at Dunlap's? That's on the other side of town. Why can't we go right in the Boston store? It's closer. The Boston store never has anything pretty. 
Sarah, do you think the buyer at the Boston store is mad at the customers that he buys ugly dresses on purpose? Come on, here it is. We'll go in. Yet, yeah, where's the dress department? Oh, I think it's on the fourth floor. We better ask the men. We'll find ask it. Ask the men, but how will it do? Mister, on what floor are the latest dresses? Uh, third floor, madam. The elevators are to the left. Thank oh, you. I thought it was on the fourth floor. Come on, let's get in here. There's a lot of people in here. Second floor, ladies' dresses. Oh, let's get off here. Come on, Ma. The man said the third floor. But the elevator man ought to know where they are. Let's go up to the third floor. Didn't you hear the floor stepper? Floor walker, Mother. Walker. Lady, are you going to get off here? Uh, pardon me. Is this floor the ladies' dress? Yes, ma'am. Well, the man downstairs said the third floor. Lady, would you please either get off or out of the door? You're tying up the whole elevator service. Is this store in business to run elevator service or to sell dresses? <laughs> Lady, I'll have to ask you to get off or to step back in the car. Come on, Mother. Don't make a scene. Please, Ma. Let's get off. All right, all right. May I help you, madam? We would like to look at some dresses. Uh, for yourself? No, for my daughter. Oh, that'll be the third floor in the Mrs. Department. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You see, I told you. But the man said... What the... difference does it make what the man said? If the dresses are on the third floor, you can't look at them on second the second floor, floor no matter what the man said. Come on, here's an elevator. Boy. Third floor, Mrs. Dresses, children's dresses. Come on, here's the floor. Uh, may I help you, ladies? Yeah, I would like to get some dresses for my daughter. Something nice of good quality, but the price should be right. Huh? And uh, what have you in mind? Well, we need some dresses suitable for our trousseau. My daughter Sally here is going to be married next month on the 8th. Well, be... isn't that nice? Oh, sure, it's nice. She's getting a fine fella, too. In the uniform business. Maybe you heard of him, uh, Mr. Mom, Sidney. please. What's the matter? Is it a secret? But you don't have to tell everything to everybody you meet. Uh, step this way, please. We have so many lovely things. You could assist me a great deal by telling me where you intend spending your honeymoon. You're going abroad, I presume? She presumes. So many of our customers go abroad. Why, only yesterday we outfitted the young lady for an extended cruise in her yacht. I don't suppose you're going on a yacht? We'll let you in on a secret. She's not going on a yacht. It has been my experience when one goes to Europe, one requires at least five evening gowns for the boat trip. Couldn't you do it before? But in that case, you would have to wear one gown twice. Mm, wouldn't that be terrible? Maybe the captain had stopped the boat and put you off. Mm. Oh, I suppose you could do it with four. But on all of my trips, and I make several every year, I have found that unless one has a different dress for every night, one feels so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Would you believe it? The last trip I made from Europe, I wore one dress the whole trip, day and night, and I didn't feel the slightest bit uncomfortable. When did you make a European trip, Ma? I didn't know you were ever on an ocean liner. Yes, uh, how do you think Pop and I got here from the old country? On a train? Oh. I had one dress, and believe me, I was the best-dressed woman in the steerage. Uh, how many evening gowns will you require, madam? One. One dress for a European trip? Who's going on a European trip? I thought you said the young lady was going on her honeymoon to Europe. The honeymoon, we said. Europe, you invented yourself. <laughs> I'll show you something. Just a minute. Ma, why did you say only one evening dress? You know darn well I'm going to get more than one. From her, I don't think we're even going to get one. I can't stand her. She's too elegant. Now, here's a lovely little thing. Something I brought back from Paris myself. It's a genuine importation. Importation? It looks more like taffeta. Uh, this is an exclusive model. You won't find another one of these in the United States. Mm -hmm. Maybe nobody else wants one. There isn't a single copy made of this dress. How much is it? $175. A hundred... No back and no sleeves and $175? How much would it be if it had a back and sleeves? You are paying for the cut. Look, it don't cost any more to cut it this way than to cut it some other way. Does the scissors know what it's doing? Would you like to slip it on, miss? Should I try it on more? Yes, yeah, sure, sir. Try them. What does it cost? Step right in here. Uh, I'll come in. $175, and she's snooty, too. <laughs> Madam, that dress is a steal at that price. We really should get $250 for it. I don't see how the firm can sell it at this price. Yeah, maybe they're losing money. Well, here it is. What do you think, Ma? Oh, Sam, it's beautiful. But won't you catch cold? It's $175 for a scoy. That's the latest thing. Of course, an evening wrap goes with the dress. Oh, for the same money? Oh, no, madam. The evening wrap is $325. It has a stable collar and is quite long, covers the dress completely. Pay $175 for a dress and then you pay extra for something to cover it up. What's the matter? Are you ashamed of it? It's really a lovely little thing. Nothing elaborate, you understand. But for a little inexpensive model, it'll do very well. 
You can also wear it for a dinner dress. Thank you very much. I think one should have a few of these simple little things in one's wardrobe. It saves you good dresses. What's the matter? Ain't this a good dress? Well, I wouldn't consider this one of the finest. What I mean by a good dress is something that costs three or four hundred dollars. Of course, these little things would do to wear around the house, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sarah, do you like it? Yes, I like it, Ma. How much is it? The price is $175. Yeah, I know the price is $175, but how much does it sell for? <laughs> uh, we guarantee the material in this dress to be the finest quality, and the cut speaks for itself. In all my experience, both here and abroad, I have never seen a dress of this type sell at anywhere near this price. Maybe you could do a little better. This is strictly a one-price store, madam. But I don't like your one price. Maybe you could find me another one. Can't you understand, Ma? They don't cut prices Quiet, here. Sir. In all the years I've been here, I don't know a single occasion that we have reduced prices at this time of the year. Of course, in two or three months, if this dress is not sold, we may reduce it. But a dress like this is bound to be sold. But we can't wait a couple months. We need it right away almost. You see, Ma, I told you. Do you want me to show you something more reasonable? We have a few. I'll get some of them. Oh, what are you going to do, Ma? Take it or not? Watch the rush. We can always take it. You see, Ma, it doesn't do any good to have you along. You have to pay the same price as anybody else. I like the dress. The longer I see it, the more I like me it. Me too. Who is that man over there? Is that Louis Epstein? Look and see. I don't know him. Sure you know him. He's a relative. His wife's sister, Rachel, is married to Dave Bloom's wife's brother. He's a cousin. Well, what difference does that make? It makes a lot of difference. Louis, Louis, come over here. Oh, hello, Becky. How are you? Hello, Louis. Ah. This is my daughter, Sally, the one that's going to be married. How do you do? Ah. And this is my other daughter, Yetta. Hello. Oh, what fine girl. Yeah. Louis, you're working here. Yeah, I'm the buyer. Ain't that nice? You've been here long? Five years already. Louis, you got something to say here? Sure. What do you want? Look, look at this dress. Oh, it's a fine dress. I know. The lady told us. Uh, who's waiting on you? That one with the fancy earrings. She already told us about the dress. Well, I'll wait on you myself. What does she know? She's only been here two weeks. I thought she owned the place. She was talking about trips to Europe and buying dresses in five evening gowns. We got her from the hardware department two weeks ago. Uh-huh. Louis, how much is that dress mm. like this? Uh, what's it, Mark? $175. Shut up. Do you like it? Why, yes. It, it uh, ain't bad, Louis. It'll do, you uh, know. Take it, it for $99.75. How about halterations? Mm, halterations will cost you $3. All right, call the whole thing $95. Uh, call it $100. Call it $95, Louis. Remember, you're our cousin. Well, for $5, I wouldn't argue with you. Call it $100. For $5, I wouldn't argue with you. Call it $95. All right. Miss Brown, make out a slip for $95 and I'll okay it. Yes, Miss Eifstein. If you pick out anything else, let me know. Goodbye. Much obliged, Louis. And look, come over for dinner sometime, huh? Gee, that's swell, Ma. Uh -huh, Sarah. So you didn't want me along, huh? I'd have paid $175 for that dress without a word. That's all right, Sarah. Don't worry. I just sent it back. Uh -huh.